Hey everyone, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery, and today I'm gonna to share with you if I were to start over tomorrow, here are the 10 things that I do to make a million dollars from scratch. Now, I will preface this in a few ways. Number one, this is not gonna be through investing in stock or cryptocurrency or anything like that, because we're gonna act as if I'm starting over tomorrow. If I'm starting over tomorrow, I'm starting with nothing. I don't get to take with me and keep all the money I have earned and made, because then that would give me the advantage to use that to, as leverage to invest it and be able to make money from that. And you need money to make money when it comes to investing in stocks or crypto or whatever it might be. So we're gonna act as if I'm starting from zero which might be a position that some of you are in, zero to a million dollars, so that you can understand the mentality and what I would do being in a position of zero and working my way up, which is gonna take a period of time. And the way I'm gonna be doing this is through online businesses, because that's the best opportunity that exists in the world for an average person without a significant investment to be able to start their own business. With an online business, you don't need a physical location and a store and all the things that you typically need with a traditional business. You can leverage technology. And there's many incredible opportunities that exist online today that are incredibly effective. And I'll be outlining some of them uh, here today in this video training. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is that we're also gonna act as if I don't have the skills and the talents and the knowledge that I have today. Because if I'm starting over tomorrow as 35-year-old Stephen James, who's already had success and been through the journey and has the knowledge and the skills that I've spent years of my life cultivating and trying to master, then that would give me a bit of an unfair advantage as well. Um, there's a big difference between 35-year-old Stefan and 21-year-old Stefan. 21-year-old Stefan as a newbie and a beginner and struggling and having to make those shifts to get myself out of that position to get momentum and to be on the path towards earning a million dollars. And I think what's really important to understand, one of the most powerful things that changed my life is realizing it's not about what you get, it's about who you become. Because look, to make a million dollars, you can have that money. The money doesn't matter, it's what really matters is who you become. Because to make a million bucks, you have to become confident and creative and a hard worker and you have to be a leader. You have to be someone that adds massive value to other people's lives. You have to be someone who's intelligent. You have to be someone that can you know, overcome adversity and challenges and failure and has that mindset and that mentality. There's all of these qualities and character traits and habits and disciplines and, 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 and growth that you have to go through and develop yourself to be the kind of person that earns a million dollars. That's the most important thing. So if someone were to give you a million dollars or give me a million dollars and I hadn't cultivated any of that, if you haven't earned it, you don't know how to duplicate it. You don't know how to recreate it again and again and again and that's a very important thing. For me, the most important thing that I have of earning millions of dollars is confidence. And if I have confidence and I have what I know and the skills that I have, it's so much easier for me to make a million dollars. I mean, I could do it much faster than most because I've already done it and that gives me an advantage. So the key is I don't wanna give you a fish, you don't wanna fish, I wanna teach you how to fish so I could feed you not just for a day but for a lifetime. And that's what's valuable when you really try to go through these steps and the journey of, be, of becoming a millionaire, making a million bucks, is that it gives you the ability to make more and as much as you want and if you lose it all, you know, if I lost it, started over tomorrow, I could do it a lot faster and a lot easier than it did the first time. You know, they say the first million is the hardest, but the second million is so much easier. I think for me, the first million that I made, or at least my million net worth, was when I was 27 years old. And I first started business when I was 21 years old, but then I started Project Life Mastery when I was 25 years old. My first number of years in business were just developing skills and, and, and learning and you know, marketing and business and sales and all those different things. But once I started Project Life Master, I was able to take a lot of that with me and it laid the foundation of the success that I had of going from 25 to 27 or 28 and earning a million dollars. And then from there to make $2 million was so much easier. I think it happened in a year or two after that. And of course, since then, millions more. So I want to share that with you so you guys understand that. The hardest part is going from zero to really six figures. And once you get to that point, you can really get momentum and it can scale up really fast. So the hardest part is gonna be that initial part, just like with anything, that's the hardest part that most people don't get past that I wanna really emphasize in this training. Another thing here I wanna mention is that the 10 steps I'm gonna give you do not consist of mindset. And that's actually a bit of a disservice. I just didn't have the time in this video, this is gonna be a pretty long training probably because I'm just here to serve and give to you as much as I can. I don't care how long this takes, 
Those of you that are committed and interested to what I have to say, I'm essentially giving you a business plan that you could execute if you want. Um, but this is gonna be probably a long video because I'm not gonna hold back. I just wanna give and share and share and share. Uh, but if I include a lot of the mindset stuff, this video is gonna be really long and I've already got a lot of other videos and content that go into that. But I do have to emphasize how important the mindset is because that's gonna lay the foundation for everything else. You've gotta have the mindset of someone who's gonna take massive action, who's driven, who's passionate, who's excited. Um, you know, someone that uh, is cultivating their habits and their routines and learns how to manage their time and prioritize things and can deal with challenges and adversity and delaying gratification and not seeing the results fast enough and being patient with that. That's all mindset. Right, and that, that's something you've got to work on. And so for me throughout my journey and all these steps, I would be simultaneously working on myself. The most important thing, you know, they say, Warren, uh, Jim Rohn says, work harder on yourself than you do on your job or your business because you are the one that's gonna execute your business plan, you know? And if you don't have, you know, I could give this plan, for example, to one person that has the mindset and has, you know, all that stuff dialed in, they can take it and crush it and run with it and have a lot of success. You can give the exact same strategy to someone that has a poor mindset, they're not gonna do anything with it. And I see that time and time again, I share opportunity after opportunity after opportunity here on YouTube and my content, but it's really only the people with the right mindset to take advantage of it versus a lot of people, unfortunately, they listen to it, but they don't have the mindset to execute and act. There's fear and there's doubt and there's a lot of these issues that you have to work on. I had it too, but you gotta work on that stuff and read self-help books and go to maybe seminars and coaches and courses and programs to, to always work on yourself and have the self-awareness about what your limiting beliefs are and how you self-sabotage yourself and you know why aren't you following through? Why you just jump from one thing to the next to the next is a shiny object syndrome and you don't really finish what you start. There's all these things you have to work on yourself as you're on the journey, and that's honestly the most important thing, okay? But I just wanna give you the steps, the more practical steps, but I do gotta mention the mindset because I'd be doing you a massive disservice by not emphasizing that. And I have some notes here too I'm gonna be looking down and referencing. Uh, the timeline of this is not gonna be overnight. It's gonna take years, uh, especially if you're truly starting from nothing. If you have no money, you don't have any skills or anything like that, it's gonna take a lot longer. Now. I'm gonna assume maybe I'm, when I'm 21 years old, I'm gonna kinda of act as if I was in that position in my life, which was, um, you know, I was living on my friend's couch, I was in debt, I, uh, you know, I, I had some computer skills because I was addicted to video games and, and things like that, so I had a bit of that advantage going for me, but I was also young, which you could say is an advantage. I didn't have much expenses. I was living off of, I think, $1,500 a month, so it might be a different situation for you, and it's very difficult to, factor in all the different scenarios and situations and circumstances that you might be in. You might be in a different country than I lived in. I'm from Canada and I understand the privileges of that and you might not have that privilege. Um, I also you know, understand you know, being young and not you know, being able to take those risks. You might be in a position where you have a family and kids and mortgage and certain things like that that you can't do some of the things that I might have done, or you might have to take a little bit of a different approach or a different path. So keep that in mind as I share this with you guys. And I also gotta mention, this is what I would do. Okay, these are the 10 steps that I would do, but doesn't necessarily mean these are the steps that you would take, okay? Because I don't know you. You know, you might be different than me. You might have different skills and strengths and weaknesses and a nature and, and passions and backgrounds and, and, and all these different things that you gotta factor in, different amounts of money, different amounts of time, different age, all of these different things you might have to uh, consider and think about. And so the steps and what I'm gonna share with you doesn't mean it's what you should do. Um, some of you might relate and connect you know, with the path that I'm taking because the path that I am gonna share with you is not just the path to making a million dollars. Because if I was starting over tomorrow, it wouldn't just be to make a million bucks, it'd be to make a million bucks doing what I love and doing what fulfills me at the same time. And I think a lot of people don't talk about that. You know, a lot of people, they're so fixated on making a certain amount of money, but they don't realize that it's kind of empty if you're not also doing what fulfills you. You know, once you make a million bucks, which by the way, I think that to make a million dollars, you've gotta have a passion or a love for what you're doing. Because if you're just doing it for the money, you're only gonna get so far. You know, I remember for me when I was just trying to make money and I just didn't care about passion, I only got so far. I made, I made money you know, in a variety of different ways online and 
to, you know, affiliate marketing and all the different things that I did to make money. But, it, you know, once you make a certain amount of money, you need passion and drive and hunger and enthusiasm and a love for the process to really scale to go to that next level. So I think that's an important piece and those are things that I take into consideration and I've done so many different businesses that I can now know and say what my passion, what my purpose is and align with that. And so I think that's an important thing to recognize but either way, regardless, you watching this, you listening to this, you're gonna get a lot of value. You're gonna see the steps and the path and it might be in a different order, different sequence and you can kinda change it around but this is uh, just my transparency uh, sharing with you guys what I would personally do under my circumstances and being fulfilled at the same time, which is important. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna draw some things out for you guys too and write things out. <clears throat> the first thing that I would do, the first thing, assuming that I'm in a position where I'm not making much. We can maybe say that I'm in a position where I have a job. I think a lot of people it's safe to say you maybe have a job or a way that you're bringing in a consistent income. For me, the most important thing that I'd focus on when I'm first starting out is I try to find some sort of job that I could do to make money, but the job would not be a traditional job where I'm pinning my 40 hours a week working for someone else and not developing any skills and growing. I would specifically try to find a job that can make me money to pay my bills and maybe some money to invest in my business and some of the other things, because that's important, but more importantly, doing something that is helping me develop skills that would be valuable for me later down the road to make that million dollars. So what I'd be talking about here would be doing something like sales. You know, sales is the lifeblood, the oxygen for a business to make money. You have to have the ability to sell and persuade and influence other people. Um, you know, that's how business exists. That's how businesses make money. And so by saying to myself, okay, you know what? I need to get a job because I have to pay my bills. I got to support myself. Why not at least get a job where I'm not just developing skills that are gonna be useless down the road. I'm gonna develop skills simultaneously that will be valuable for me down the road that can help contribute to everything else that I'll do. So I'd maybe try to find something in sales perhaps and that way I can learn sales and practice and build confidence through that and learn different strategies and techniques perhaps to influence and persuade or gain rapport with people or to communicate effectively. I think that's a valuable skill and What's great about it too is often you can get paid based on commission, so you only get rewarded based on how many sales that you get, and that will be motivation and incentive because now there's not much of a ceiling. You can make really as much money as you want based on how effective you are at sales. So I think that would be valuable, and I maybe consider something like that. When I was 21, um, I did public speaking, and for me, that was something I always wanted to do, and I did speaking and coaching because and that was my skill that I made money with, a high income skill, if you will. So I'm actually gonna write that down here for you guys. We'll say a high income skill to develop or maybe mean like a freelancer. Sorry, to finish my story, so I was a speaker and I was a coach because I was impacted by people like Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy and all the old school self-help guys when I was 17 and that made a huge impact on me and I knew that I wanted to help people and you know, I wanted to be in the business of helping other people and um, you know, of course I wanted to make money as well but you get in the business of helping people to help people number one and of course money follows that. So for me that was something that I wanted to do and I wasn't a great speaker and you know, I had done some Toastmasters and things like that and I was uh, in, at the time in the dating space improving my confidence, my social skills and I knew that I could get paid helping other people with that and at the same time I would develop my speaking skills and my coaching skills and my communication skills and sales and everything like that through that process. And so I started my first business at 21 years old. It's called Lifestyle Transformations in Vancouver, Canada. And I started putting on these seminars called the Dating Mastery Seminars. And I promote on Craigslist and meetup.com. And I do the free seminar every uh, two weeks and get 10, 20 people out. And I would add value to them and I'd give a pitch at the end. Hey, if you wanna sign up for coaching or I'm gonna do this boot camp event, here's how much it costs. And I'd you know, influence a few people in the room, those that wanted to go to the next level with me, they could sign up for my coaching. And so I found ways like that to make $1,500, $2,000 a month, and that was enough money to live off of. It wasn't gonna achieve success for me or anything like that, but something like that was valuable for me, and I'd do that again because I'm developing skills that have been valuable for me today, doing what I do now on YouTube, for example, 
skill, uh, skills of sales, communication, all these things, coaching people, helping people, all of that was so valuable that laid the foundation and also made me some money. Okay, so that's another example. Maybe for you it could be writing. If you already have a, a, the skill of writing, you can work for a blog and you can get paid for every article that you write for them and that can be a great way to develop your writing skills and learning about search engine optimization and you know, kind of the inner workings of an online business. You know, maybe you could start making money doing copywriting and that could be a side hustle or like a freelance gig. That's gonna be valuable for you. You're getting paid to get better at your craft. That, that is so powerful, guys. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. So I would try to do something like that. Now, it might not be right for you. Maybe you've already got a job. Maybe you make a great income from that. Maybe you can't you know, uh, quit your job and take that path. But again, this is what I would do in the position of being young, taking on that risk. I can make enough money to survive. And for me, and a key thing is I'd actually refuse to get a job. Because for me, I would be afraid that by getting a job, I'd lose my hunger, I'd lose my drive, I'd be complacent and comfortable. Man, have you ever noticed that once you're in a job or maybe once you're in a relationship, how many people stay in a job or relationship they don't love way too long? Because it's comfortable, it's hard to leave it once you're in it. And so I learned this from Sylvester Stallone when he was in the grind and the hustle and he wrote the movie Rocky. He failed and failed and failed, but he refused to get a job because he didn't want to be seduced back into a comfort zone. He wanted, you know, for me, when I was in the struggle early on, that was the most exciting time for me in my life because I was so driven, I was so hungry, and the fact that I had my back against the wall and every month I had to find a way to make enough money to support myself, that gave me the drive and the hunger which was so valuable in laying that foundation. So um, basically what I'm trying to say is try to find, I try to find some sort of job working for an online business and try to think about the skills of business, marketing, sales, uh, you know, anything related to an online business that could be valuable for me to make money uh, doing and develop my skill set while I pursue these other steps of what I'm going to share. And the value of that is you can work from home, perhaps, right? You can have flat flexibility and work, have more time to work on your online business as well. So there's there's a lot of great perks to that. I think that's an important thing that I would do, though. Okay. Um, okay. So that's number one. Number two. And I actually should mention as well. I'd also be learning as much as I can about that skill. So if it's speaking, in my case, I was studying professional speakers and I was practicing and cultivating that a lot. If it's sales, I remember going through a course, an audio program called The Psychology of Sales or The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. You know, and I listened to that again and again and again. So I was like working and learning and reading books and studying that skill so I can get better and better at that. Okay, next would be choosing a niche. So this is a niche that I build my business in. And a niche is just a topic or a category or a genre. Think as if you go to the bookstore, you know, remember bookstores before Amazon and whatnot? If you go to the bookstore or library, there's so many different niches and topics. You can go to the self-help section. The self-help is maybe broken down into, uh, you know, goal setting and habits and, you know, all these different sub, sub niches that exist within that. There's the relationship section. There's the cooking section. There's the home and gardening section. There's, you know, the technology and computer section. There's the fashion section. There's construction, there's all these different niches that exist if you go to a bookstore. That's what I would choose. What is a niche that I can build my business in that is something I have a passion for, something that I believe in and will be excited to pursue long term, something that I will be interested enough and passionate enough to be going deep in and learning simultaneously and studying and getting deeper and deeper and understanding that niche as, as, po- as much as I possibly can. Okay, so that would be a key factor for me. And for me, that would be personal development, self-help. That's what I love. I do it anyways. And I'd want to take that and turn that into a business because there's the opportunity of having that passion and having that knowledge that I'd gain as the deeper that I go into personal development. So it'd have to be something that has a passion, something that there's a high demand for, Okay, so personal development, there's a huge demand for it online, on YouTube, on Google, on social media. You know, there's so many different people out there you can find and content and resources on that. So I know there's a lot of demand for it. Has to be something there's potential for profitability in. 
So if I were to build up my business, my brand in the niche of personal development or whatever it might be, there has to be ways I can make money from it. So I'd have to take some time to study and follow the other people that I'd want to model. Okay, I'd find other businesses that I want to model and I would know the ins and outs of their business. Um, if there was like a blog in personal development, I'd find like what are the top 10 blogs and I'd subscribe to their blogs and read their blogs and what are they publishing and what, what's getting the most engagement on their blog and what are they offering? What are their products? How are they making money? Do they have books? Do they have courses? Do they have coaching? What do they have? What do they offer? Right? So that way I can understand the business and the niche that I'm in and the path that I can go because someone's already paved it for me. Right? So I can just follow in that path rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. And the same thing would go if it was cooking or fitness. You know, I try to find other businesses and see are they making money from it? Because if they're making money from it, then I know that there's the possibility of making money, but also I want to see who's doing things on a big scale. Is there a potential to make a million dollars from this? Are there brands and businesses that are big enough doing that? Okay, so that's an important thing, especially with the criteria of making a million dollars from it. Um, and then what I'd also do too is, you know, because I choose self development, it's a very broad niche. You know, you don't want to go too broad. You want to narrow that niche. Self development is a lot of different topics. So I try to pick one sub niche. You know, so for example, for me, it might be in goal setting and habits and rituals in your life. That's something that I I feel that is important to me and I've learned a lot on, I can add a lot of value with and share and I can go deeper with myself and share what I learn in that area. So that'd be a great way to start and then I could branch out into some other topics and that's essentially what I did with Project Life Mastery. Okay, let's move a little bit faster here guys. The third step. Is I would start building a brand. All right, so Great, I've got my high income skill, I'm working on it. It might take months, it might even take years to continuously do that and get better and better and make money doing that, great. But on the side, I've chosen my niche, this is the direction that I wanna go. I'm kinda taking a step back to map out and plan where my business you know, that I wanna build and some ideas that I'd have for it. But I'd wanna build a brand, and a brand is just a name. It's a name that a mass number of people recognize and associate emotion to. So you might think of a brand as Apple or Microsoft or Google or Amazon or Tesla. Those are big brands, they're just names that have a logo and they're so popular and been marketed and to repetition so many times that when you think of them, you think and feel certain emotions. So if you think of Tesla, you know, there's certain emotions that you associate to Tesla, like it's cool, it's innovative, it's unique, um, you know, it's good for the environment, it's electric, you know, Elon Musk, you associate that to the brand. That's, that's essentially what a brand is. But in my case, I would think, hey, what's a name that I can build and, and build a brand around in the personal development space? So I think of a name, and for me, that's Project Life Mastery, right? Surprise, surprise. So I would build Project Life Mastery. Um, that is a name that I come to and that's a name that uh, represents the, you know, what I want to communicate and share and the vision that I have long term for my business and my brand. And I would start by building my brand by having my logo and having that name but I'd set up a website, right? so projectlifemastery.com would be a, one of the first steps that I'd take with that, as well as my YouTube channel, Project Life Mastery, so my social media on Instagram and Facebook, all that sort of stuff. So I wanna prepare and reserve all of that and now start creating content, okay? So the fourth step is I would take is creating content. Now, for me, this is the direction that I would go because this is something that I love. Now this is my passion, I love to consume content number one, and I consume content constantly, books and seminars and courses, and co I've done that and that's been my life. You know, and so that's something that I've accumulated so much content and I don't lack motivation for it that it gives me so much that I can share and give and help other people with, especially when I discover things that truly benefit my life, why not share that with you and the whole world and other people so that they can benefit as well. Right, so that's kind of the mentality that I would have is just learn and consume and then share that with other people under this brand. And I love to communicate, I love to speak, and I've developed, been developing those skills, you know, my speaking, my coaching skills. And so that could translate to using a platform like YouTube or a blog to reach larger amounts of people and the masses from that. Okay, so with that said, 
Uh, and by the way, content is king. The internet is made up of content. You're consuming content now. When you go to Facebook, Instagram, any platform, everything is text, audio, video, images. That's called content. So you want to be not just a consumer of content, a creator of content. Right, and that's the best way through VAM, value added marketing. If you add value through content, it's so much easier to monetize that. And so, if I can build an audience and serve people and, and truly care about people and find out what their needs are, deliver that to them, I can build a relationship with people and that can cultivate trust and that can open up so many different doors that I can make money from that. Okay, so now specifically, what I would do in terms of creating content, I build my YouTube channel. I think video is the best form of content you can create better than a podcast, better than a blog, and I'd be publishing at least three times a week. If I want to make a million bucks, and depending on how long I want it to take, the more content I publish, the sooner I'll get there. Because the beginning stage, I know okay, that I can share with you now, the first few months is going to be brutal. I'm going to put out content, no one's going to consume it. You know, I might share it on my Facebook to my friends or family, but they're only going to look at it because they're curious to see what the hell I'm up to. They're not really interested in what I'm sharing. And I've got to create content for months to get better and skilled and make adjustments to find out what works and what doesn't work. Because the process I got to take is I got to throw shit against the wall, see what sticks. So I publish a variety of different topics related to that sub niche first of maybe rituals and habits and goal setting. And then I may branch off and see what. You know, what takes off? What's gonna get some views here? What's gonna get me some momentum? And I can build an audience from that. And once you build a base audience, they will then tell you what they want. And then the content I'll be creating from that point out is gonna be more tailored to the subscriber base that I have, right? Because I wanna keep them engaged because they're gonna help me grow to 1,000 subscribers and 10,000, 100,000 beyond that. So I gotta cater to them. And so I'll be publishing at least three times a week on YouTube. I would be creating content on, you know, maybe trying different forms like interviewing people and then, you know, content like this. I might try collaborations with people if I can. Uh, I might, you know, share products that I benefited from or seminars or, or books and review them and share my experience with them because I know a lot of people would be searching for those things and they're looking for people's um, thoughts and opinions and experiences with that. Uh, I'd be publishing probably on Instagram and my blog and, uh, and things like that too, but I'd want to choose one platform to stick with because it's very difficult when you dilute your focus on too many things. You know, for me, when I started, I was doing YouTube and a blog and then other social media stuff, but it, it became a lot and I really YouTube was the biggest platform for me. And so if I were to do it again, I'd focus more on YouTube and leverage that and put more time and attention into that because everything else kind of slowed me down a bit. Not that you still don't want to have it and use it, but I put probably 80% of my focus on YouTube. And for you, it could be different. It could be a blog. Maybe you love that. There's potential there. It could be a podcast. Maybe you love that. Maybe it's Instagram. I don't know what it is, but I would be creating tons of content related to this niche under my brand, modeling the other businesses that I'm learning from and consuming their content to get ideas from, and I would just ramp that up and uh, do that for several several months. Now, number five is now we get into monetization. And I think the easiest way and the most logical next step would be through affiliate marketing. So what I would be doing here is at this stage, I'm building Project Life Mastery, I'm creating tons of content, I'm adding massive value, hopefully by now, a few months, you know, I'm getting some views and some subscribers, but affiliate marketing now opens the door to start making money from that. And affiliate marketing is a process of promoting a product and earning an affiliate commission for it. So I would find products that I've gone through because as I mentioned, all throughout, I'm working on myself. I'm going through courses and trainings and books and seminars and I'm, that's what's giving me the content and helping me actually become an authority figure to be the kind of person that someone wants to follow and wants to learn from because I have the knowledge and I have something that makes me different and unique than everyone else out there. So I'd be making a transformation in myself to become the kind of person that can serve people and add value but also the kind of person that people would look up to and admire. But affiliate marketing is great because as I'm going through all these great things, there are going to be certain things that benefit me a lot that I can share and that have affiliate programs that I can make money from. So there might be some courses that I go through and I'm like, wow, this is really, really great. This helped me so much. This is incredible. Other people need this. And what I'd probably do is create some content, 
sharing that course, reviewing that course, sharing my experience with it for other people that are interested in it, that want to learn about it, they can read my article, come to my video, and you know, hear from a real person what their experience was, and if they buy it through my affiliate link, I can earn a commission from that. So that's pretty cool because I can earn a commission by helping people and sharing something that I think is valuable for them. Um, that would be probably the first way that I would start to try to monetize that. And I'd probably pick one to three products and act as if they're my own. You know, Treat them like this is my product and so I'm gonna market it and promote it and share it and talk about it and, and believe in it as much as it's my own product. So that's how I'd get in the door of earning affiliate commissions. Uh, if I could, you know, the easier to get to a million bucks, to scale it is promoting products that are higher ticket, right? So you might first start with products that might be more inexpensive, but products and resources and trainings that can earn you higher commissions of hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars can help you scale and make more money a lot faster. So that would be a, a, a really powerful step. And by the way, I actually teach how I do all of this stuff, except for this one, but I teach all of these and how to do specifically affiliate marketing more in depth. I've got a course called Affiliate Marketing Mastery. If you're interested in that, just maybe throw that in for you guys. I'll throw a link below for you guys, but affiliatemarketingmastery.com. If you guys are interested in that path, then that can be of value to you guys. Okay, the next step, number six. Now, the next step is selling on Amazon, but before I get into that, I forgot to mention, how long is this taking, right? I mean, that's an important thing to think about. This is something that you know, you'll continue to work uh, you know, until you're making enough money that your business can support you and you can quit that. Or, or maybe this can become more part-time and this can be more part-time and this can eventually take over so that you don't have to work for someone else or do freelancing, whatever it is. So this would be doing it long enough that's necessary. So doing freelance jobs, doing sales, working for online businesses, whatever it might be, that would be a constant and that would help me develop those skills. And by the way, I would be leveraging that skill with everything else, okay? Because I want that skill, whatever I'm freelancing for, to be relevant in the direction, the path that I'm going because that will make it so much easier. Choosing a niche, I mean, that doesn't take too long, maybe a week, maybe a day, maybe two weeks. Uh, building a, But studying the niche is obviously a continual process of following people and seeing what they're doing and learning. Building a brand, you know, that's, you know, the name of the brand might take you a week or so to, to figure out and the logo might take you a few days or a week to create uh, and setting up your YouTube and all that might take a little bit of time. Um, but that's not too long. And then creating content, that, that's going to go on for months. It's probably going to be, not if I don't have any money to run ads, to get traffic and I'm building it organically through content, I'm gonna expect that to take three to six months to be able to get maybe 100 subscribers, assuming I don't really know much what, I, what I'm doing and I don't have great skills yet, but I would just try a lot of different things, be resourceful, watch my videos, how can I improve, how can I get better, how can I make adjustments, and just continually work on that craft and hopefully the skills here will help translate to make that a lot faster, okay? Um, and you know, affiliate marketing, that's something that doesn't take much time and that's why I think it's the, the easiest way to start monetizing this business that I'm building because I don't have to create a product, right? I don't have to be the expert to create it. I don't have to come up with the idea. I don't have to invent anything. I don't have to spend the months and gain the skills to create a product and put together the funnels and the sales page and collect payments and have customer support. I don't have to do all of that. I can just find something, promote it, earn commissions from it. So that it, it, it's really the easiest and the fastest way because I don't have to do that. And really, all I have to do is to do good at affiliate marketing is get good at getting traffic and adding value, building relationship with people, and then just recommending something that might be a good fit for them. So that's not too difficult to do and I can start making money from that, which can then reduce my time here to spend it more here in my business, and that will help accelerate everything else. Because if you've got your nine to five, you're working 40 hours a week, that's gonna slow that down. But if you can get to working 20 hours a week here, and you're making money here, and you can dedicate more time, then that will accelerate it so much faster. That's, that's kind of why I laid it out that way too, so that to make enough money to, to, to have more time to dedicate to it. 
Uh, and then also affiliate marketing doesn't cost, all of this so far does not really cost much at all. You know, maybe a hundred bucks. You know, I, I started with a di little digital camera, not even uh, the DSLR cameras or anything like that. So I just used what I had, but you know, obviously you can invest more in it. But assuming that I'm starting with nothing and I don't have much money, this would be a great logical path for me because uh, I can take some of this money, invest here. There's not much money that's required to do that. Okay, so selling on Amazon is something that I would do because it's such an amazing opportunity. It's too hard to pass up. So much money is being made on Amazon. Um, Amazon does so much of the heavy lifting for you because they allow you to use their platform, their marketplace. They have trust and credibility. They collect payments. They're a search engine that's easier to rank products in rather than Google, which is a search engine that's a lot harder and more competitive to rank in. So I could leverage Amazon for that reason and I could run ads on Amazon and I could private label a product. So essentially what I would do is I'd find a product in the self-development, okay, I, sorry. I'm a little bit scattered here, guys. I apologize because I'm really thinking this through with you guys as I'm going through it. Two things, two different ways that I consider selling on Amazon. One would be through a book and the second would be through a physical product. Now, either way that I would choose, it would be relevant to my niche, which would be self-development. So if it was a book, and I'll share with you the difference and why I choose one or the other. If it was a book, it would be a self-development book. And it might be specific to habits, it might be specific to mindset or something re related to what I'm talking about with my content and whatnot. A book is quite easy to do if I'm already in the habit of creating content because a book is just a series of articles or a series of videos condensed and written that I can you can package and you can start selling on a platform like Amazon and you can sell as a Kindle and paperback and audiobook. I'd consider a book if funds were limited. Okay, funds are limited because a book, I would use it as a way to generate some passive income from Amazon, but more importantly, I'd also use it as a lead gen. So in my book, I would link to my website and my brand to generate interest and build, build my brand. Okay, so it'd be something that I would use to build my brand on the back end. But I'd only really do a book primarily and put the energy into that if my money was limited and it, you know, it's a product that I could have and start selling. But if I had more money and if I was making more through affiliate marketing or from my job or my high income skill, really what I would do is a physical product. And a physical product would be private labeling a product, finding a supplier, let's say in China or in the US or anywhere you want from Alibaba, let's say, but sourcing that product and ordering, let's say, 500 units, putting my logo, my brand on it, shipping it to Amazon uh, in the United States to sell it on Amazon.com. And that would be a way to have another income stream, my own product that I could sell and start making passive income from. And I can also leverage my brand and my content and the skills I've developed affiliate marketing to now sell my own product. And I just don't have to, I don't have to only sell other people's products. This physical product would be related to my niche. So personal development, it could be like a journal, it could be a, a day planner, it could be uh, flashcards. There's so many different things in the self-development niche that I could launch and sell. But the reason why I would do this if I had more money, because it does cost more money than a book, this will cost a couple thousand bucks to pursue, but there's way more potential and way more money to be made on a book. A book can make you good money, hundreds of dollars a month passive, that's pretty good, a thousand bucks, maybe 2,000 bucks passive, depending on how big you build up your book. Physical product, there's much more of a market for that, and you can scale it and make way more money a lot easier and faster than you can with just a book. So that's why I would go in that direction. I think Amazon's great, I love it. A lot of opportunity, and if I can combine everything, because look, what I've got here now is I'm already now getting a business that can make money, number one, through my content, okay, with my content, I can start eventually making money from YouTube ads. You know, so YouTube can start paying me money for people to advertise on my channel. I'm opening up doors over time to build a brand that I can get sponsorship deals from. So companies will pay me money to create a video talking about their product or whatever. That, that's got a lot of potential. Affiliate marketing is easy because then I can just share things that I'm already benefiting from through my affiliate link and make money from that and review different things. So that, that's a great income stream that always will fit in and always be relevant. And then I've got another one on Amazon, whether it's a book or physical product. And so now I've got diversified pillars in my business. I'm not dependent just on one. And through this, there might be one that can really take off. 
right? So for example, I've had the experience when I started selling supplements on Amazon a number of years ago, it really took off for me. And I was like, I just couldn't believe it. It was actually taking off faster than some other things that I had going on that's putting more time and more energy into. But if I didn't try it, I wouldn't have had that opportunity of that growing fast. So I, I kind of like doing that at a certain point. Now you could say this will dilute focus a bit, but again, you gotta understand this is happening over time. This is happening, you know, there, there might be several months before I really get into this and really focus on it. But I'd really want to establish my habits and my routines here and ideally try to get out of this uh, to be able to focus more on that. Okay, so you gotta factor that in too. Um, it will take a bit of time. Um, now, um, so yeah, I think I covered what I wanted to say about selling on Amazon. I've got some resources if you're interested in selling physical products. Uh, I've got a free video training, a four part series. If you go to projectlifemastery.com slash FBA, FBA is Fulfillment by Amazon. I'll link that below. If you're interested in learning about that, I'll share that for you guys. And if you are interested in book publishing, I do have some trainings on that as well, which I'll link to as well. I've got a course called Mastering Book Publishing. Masteringbookpublishing.com slash free, I think will take you to a page uh, where you can get some free training to learn more about that. So, so far, those are the steps I take. We're at step number six. Okay, let's move on to step number seven, which is, okay. Now we're getting to really scaling this. Number seven is I'd create a funnel and a list, an email list. So at this point now, I'm putting out content, I'm getting traction with that, I'm starting to make money. Really, I'd probably do this a lot sooner, to be honest with you. Like here in the state, based on how once I'm getting some traffic and whatnot, I'd want to capture leads. Because the thing is, when you're creating content on YouTube or a blog, most people that consume your content are going to leave and never come back. They're not going to subscribe, or maybe they will, but they'll probably never come back. It's like going into a store, a retail store, the chances of you coming back to that store are pretty rare, not unless you really love it or you really remember it or unless you bookmark that website or whatever it is. So you have a very limited opportunity to capture that person's information so that you can actually build a relationship with them over long term. So I kind of think of the process like dating. You know, if, uh, if I'm a guy and there's a, a woman and I'm single and I want to cultivate a relationship with that person, I've got to introduce myself, I've got to build a level of rapport, a level of connection there and then I have to ask that person for their contact information. Hey, I'd love to see you again. What's your phone number? What's your email address? Uh, how can we connect? And that gives now the possibility for that to, to turn into a potential relationship. But if I just say to that person, hey, it was nice meeting you. I'll probably see you around sometime. The chances of me seeing that person again is very slim to none. <laughs> so you want to build a list and you want to build a funnel so that you can build a relationship and, and have subscribers that you can you can promote and funnel back to your content as well as to the other offers and the products that you'd have. And so for me, a funnel is essentially like a landing page. So for example, if you go to some of the links I have in the description, that's a landing page. You go to a page, I'm gonna give you something of value, of high value, and to get it, you just have to put in your name and email and that's how I can send it to you. But I'm also building a list so that, you know, great, you're in, I know you're interested in this, you're committed, I've got a lot more that I can share with you. I can add a lot more value. I can send you more content, more information about this sub subject, and that helps us build a relationship. And then there I can, hey, you know what? Here's a product that I think could help you. I can offer a product that could potentially help meet that person's need or solve their problem, but I can also build a long-term relationship and customer where I have that person buy many, many times over and over again. Right, so I might have one person that opts in, they might buy five or 10 things that I might share with them or recommend or products that I have and they might become a raving fan. So that's an important thing in scaling your business and also building the long-term and lifetime value of a subscriber or a customer. So that's a really important step. And to do this, I would use something called ClickFunnels for the funnel and something like Aweber for the email list. I'll link those below. There's just different technologies that you can use. Uh, you do have to pay for them, but of course at this stage you're making some money that you can justify paying for those things. Uh, but I'd probably, I would do this honestly as soon as I would be getting enough views and traction on my blog and my YouTube channel where I would want to in my content have a call to action 
and mention someone like similar to what I've shared with you guys. Hey, if you want to learn more about this, go to this link, go to this page. That's a call to action, a CTA that directs and leads someone into something that can provide more information for them. So that's what I do. I build funnel and build my email list. And that's, that's really how I can get into making a lot more money and scaling my business a lot more. Because at that stage, once you're making a certain amount of money, all you got to do to get to a million bucks is you just got to up the ante. You just got to do the math. You could say, okay, if I'm making five grand a month right now just by doing this, you know, you could be making a lot more than that just by this, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand a month doing this. But if you do the math, you're like, okay, well, how am I making this money? I'm getting this many orders on my Amazon product. I've, you know, getting this many sales per month on my affiliate marketing. I'm getting this many views on my YouTube channel, on my blog. Okay, all I got to do now to make, you know, to get to a million dollars, I can actually map it out and say, okay, this is how much traffic that I need. This is how I can get that traffic. I can publish this many videos. I can run ads. I could find some more products. But you can start to brainstorm and think about how, how, what you need to increase to get to more revenue. Because now you've proven what's working. You've got a proven concept. You've got a system. And that's why I said the hardest part is getting to the point of making six figures. Because that's when you're trying to figure everything out. But once you've got it figured out and you know it's working, which this could take years. <laughs> okay, it could take you years to learn everything and do everything more importantly. But once you're making money and you've proven and validated your concept, it's so much easier now to get to the next level. Okay, so that's a really important thing. Because also here too, as you're making money, now you have the ability to outsource and lever, you know, hire people to do things for you. You can hire a virtual assistant and you know, a video editor and all that stuff, whereas at the beginning you're doing all that yourself. That allows you to move faster, which allows you to scale and make more money a lot easier as well. Okay? Whew, okay, uh, so we got to build the list. The money is in the list. Have the call to actions on my videos, my content, on my blog, directing people to my book or directing people to my physical product, my funnel, all of that. You want to, when people consume content, especially those that love it and benefit, you're doing them a disservice by not sharing with them what else you have, right? Because like for me, if I'm watching a great video or I'm listening to a podcast, I'm like, this is so good, amazing, thank you so much. I want the creator to be like, hey, if you want more, here's where to get it. You know, here's what else I have available. Like, I love that because I want to go deeper and there's a certain percentage of people that do and will that consume your content. Not everybody, but those that resonate and connect and want more and really enjoy your style and what you have to offer, they're going to want more from you. So you're giving that opportunity for those that are committed enough to go deeper with you, okay? Okay, let's move on to number, <laughs> number eight, okay. Number eight would be now... Create. This is where my writing gets really bad. Okay. Writing on an angle. Create a 30 day follow up series. 30 day follow up series. So now, once you get people opting into your email list from all of your content, all the content you put out there, it might be a hundred videos or a hundred podcasts or whatever it is, you're directing people and funneling them into your email list so you can build your list. Now, when you get people on a list, you can write out an email follow-up series. So these are emails that you spend a day or two writing out those emails. When they first opt in, they put in their name and email. You send them an email. Hey, this is Stefan. Thank you so much for subscribing. As promised, I want to give you what you opted in for. Here it is. Um, and by the way, if you want more information or on this or that, then here's my book or here's a product that can help you with this or here's a program that you can check out, right? Uh, now, maybe I'll email them the next day and have you know an email that will get sent to that person. Hey, it's Stefan again. Want to follow up? Did you watch what I shared with you? Hopefully, you benefited from it. What did you think? Uh, great. Just want to check in. I'm going to email you in the next few days with a few more, in, you know, more information. And then I can send the third email. Hey, it's Stefan again. Hope you're doing amazing. Uh, hopefully, you've gone through what I've shared with you. Today, I want to share with you something else. I think this can also help you and benefit you and enjoy. Right? And then I can email them on day four, hey, it's Stefan again, because people get busy and people you know, get distracted these days with social media and all the things they have going on. You've got you've to be omnipresent. You've got to be consistent in reaching out and following up with people. But essentially, I'd write out a 30-day series. It might be an email a day or every few days, adding value, but also sharing with people, you know, hey, here's a program that I went through. I really enjoyed it. It really changed my life, helped me in this aspect of my life. 
And uh, it's a program that I endorse and I want to share it with you so that you at least have the opportunity to check it out if you'd like. If it resonates with you, great. Fantastic. If not, that's okay too. All right. So now I can, there's a potential to make money uh, there as well. And you know, that, you know, if, if you've got a friend that you trust and you know is you know, looking out for you and giving you so much value and they share, hey, you know, I lost 30 pounds and this is what I did. I took this course you're going to probably listen to the recommendation and trust the recommendation because you know they've given so much to you. You have that relationship with them. And especially when you share something with them and they, they go through it and they benefit from it, they're like, thank you so much for sharing that with me. They thank you for the recommendation. They're more likely to also trust the next recommendation that you have as well. And that's essentially what I've done with Project Life Mastery is by sharing valuable things with people uh, that I benefited from and I've been able, able to be blessed to make money with it, but I'm always trying to lead with trying to serve and trying to give and add value, helping people first, number one, and then the money just follows that. Okay, so that's a 30-day follow-up series. You can do that using AWeber. Okay, AWeber is what I'd use, for example, to map all of that out. And here also, now when you have a funnel, okay, like a landing page, and you're giving away something, and you're building a list, the next thing that I would do, and I've got my 30-day follow-up series that can make me some money, I could run ads to that now. Because if I'm going to spend money and it's going to cost me a couple dollars per lead, per opt-in, well, I have to make a return on that. So I have to do the math and say, okay, if someone opts in, like if I have 100 people that opts into my list, how much money am I making over 30 days from that? You know, And maybe I make uh, from 100 people 1000 bucks. Okay, well, if that's the case, then I can know how much I can spend per lead. You know, I got to make sure that if I get, if I'm paying to run ads on Facebook or YouTube and it, you know, costs me a certain amount of money, but I got to make sure that I get a positive ROI on that. But once you do the math and it works and you're getting a positive ROI, then I can ramp that up. I can invest more money into that because that's just going to help me scale to a million dollars that much faster. So I'd probably consider running some ads on Facebook or YouTube. All right, number nine. And, and this, honestly, uh, I would potentially do a lot sooner as well, would be coaching. So I do coaching or maybe some sort of virtual event or mastermind or group coaching or something like that. Because here, if I have people that really benefit from what I have to say, they really enjoy my content, there will be a, a percentage of people that want more of an intimate experience to work with me. You know, that says, hey, you know what? Steph knows what he's talking about. I love what he has to say. I love his story. I love the value that he's providing here. I would love an opportunity to pay him as my coach and work with him one-on-one or go to an event with him and be able to ask him questions or have him coach me or whatever it might be. And actually, that's what naturally and organically will happen as you're doing this because as you're building subscribers, my experience was people are like, thank you, Stefan. Do you offer coaching? And I'm like, you know, at, at first I really didn't, but there was a demand that opened up for it where people were asking for it and they're willing to pay for it. And so, sure, why not? Yeah, I can coach you. Um, and I started off in coaching and then you can increase your prices as you get busier or as you become more in demand. But coaching is something you can offer a lot earlier as well. It's a great way. I mean, you're trading your time for money with it, so it's not passive, but you're developing your skills. You're, uh, I'd be developing my my coaching skills and my knowledge and helping people and it would help me connect more with my audience and know who they are as well. And it'd just be another income stream that I could add, okay? And, and uh, would help me eventually get to the million bucks. Okay, and then number 10. The 10th step that I would take is I'd create an online course. Because here's the thing, when you, at this stage, I have enough data to know what people want from me, okay? What, what out of all my videos and content are people consuming most that's in the highest demand and where most of my subscribers are coming from? You know, what does my audience perceive that I can solve for them? I'd have that data. I'd have a list of people that are engaged and interested and enjoy what I have to say. I've now got experience coaching people and even promoting other products to see you know, what's making money and what's converting best and what people are interested in buying that I do recommend to them. But the coaching is valuable because um, you know, once you start coaching people, there's certain commonalities. You kind of refine your method. And, and even as creating content, you get better at speaking and presenting and communicating and you get more refined with it. Now, by this point, by creating an online course, it's essentially a way to take, to break down what you would teach someone in coaching 
over many one-on-one sessions to break that down into a system that anybody can follow or go through and can help them achieve a certain result. And so this is the next logical step to scale and to leverage yourself because you can't really scale coaching. You're trading your time for money. There's only so many hours in the day. Whereas this, you can offer a cheaper price for a course, but you can reach so many more people. And essentially what happened for me, you know, back when I started, is I was doing these steps, um, but uh, I was doing life coaching for people, but Everybody that I was life coaching was like, Stefan, how are you making money online? As so I started sharing and I started teaching people how to publish books on Amazon. And then I did so many one on one sessions, just teaching here's step number one. You know, this first call, we'd go into finding a niche. And the second call, coaching call, I would go into, uh, you know, getting your book created. And I'd basically do that one on one. But at a certain point, I got so tired of doing that. There's only so much that I could do. And it's just boring being repetitive that I might as well break down the system that I've now proven through coaching enough people that I can put it together in a course and create the videos for that and offer it at a cheaper price so that more people can benefit from it. You don't get the personal one-on-one aspect from it, but they get the bulk of what I would share with them one-on-one at a fraction of the cost. So there, that naturally opens up as a demand because there will be a people that, you know, usually content you put on YouTube or podcasts is more introductory and it's more beginner friendly and it's more what the masses want, but it doesn't go into specifics and details and breaks everything down. That's what an online course does. It goes through all the steps. A lot of the steps can be boring and that's why it's not really good content for YouTube or anything like that. But those are the things you go much deeper in versus on social media and your YouTube and your podcast. You're more trying to appeal to the masses that can get you the most views and most attention and then you funnel all of that and segment people that want more into the course and what you can provide for them that want to go deeper with you. So when it comes to a course, there may be a few different things that I would do. I, I mean, I might create something similar to what I've done with the Life Master Accelerator, an online business master accelerator courses that I have. That's an easy course to create because it's just a coaching program and I'm, creating, I'm getting paid to create the content to put it in a member's area month after month. So that I think that would be a great easy course that I could start doing. Um, or I would probably, you know, learn about uh, selling something. Like I'd probably think, okay, what's something that I can help people with that would be really amazing, like very in depth, give so much value. Uh, you know, maybe provide a coaching element to it. Maybe provide some done for you services or something. I just go overboard. But the benefit of that too is that it will get more results for people. But I could charge at a higher price. I could do more high ticket. And it's hard to get people results with low ticket products because they're limited in how much you can do because you're not making as much from that. But if you're doing something high ticket, you can give people so much more and there's people that will spend more money, $1,000 or more, to have uh, to, to save time or to get some coaching or something that can be included to help them along their journey. So I'd probably do something high ticket and try to learn about how I can share it on a webinar and educate people on it and then make a pitch and make an offer for those that are interested in it. Um, that's essentially what I do. Those are, that's essentially what would make up a million dollar business. Now, there's a lot of elements to it. And again, this is, you know, I've, this is essentially what I've done that I'm sharing with you guys that's helped make me millions of dollars, um, you know, online. And, you know, it's not a big surprise that, you know, that's what's worked for me. And I've helped so many people. It's been fulfilling and I've been rewarded for it as well. Um, but that's essentially what I would do because that's what uh, I've enjoyed and what I'm most passionate about and I wouldn't change what I do because I love what I do and I love the impact and the contribution that I can make and you know, this is just how you can monetize it as well. Now, for you, it might be different. You know, if you have money, for example, you might go right to a physical product on, on Amazon and you know, there's courses that can teach you to do that and, and you'll create your niche and your brand and you know, content and things like that throughout it. You might decide to do a book Right, and so maybe a book for you, you know, you don't have as much money, and that's something you could pursue, you know, and you can learn how to build your niche and brand. Because, like, I do have a course that goes into that mastering book publishing and mastering book marketing. I teach all these steps, you know, how to get a book out there and build your website and build your brand, and you know, how to create content and do all that sort of stuff. So, you know, for you, it might look a little bit different. You might kind of choose this opportunity first because you might not know how to do all this other stuff and you might need to start here somewhere and that could be fine for you. Or you might start with affiliate marketing and you know, go through those steps or that process. Or maybe you wanna do coaching or an online course. 
But you know, either way, you're going to notice with all these different methods of making money, you still have to get traffic. That's the common denominator. You have to be able to get traffic and send people to whatever your offer is, or whatever it is that you're selling or promoting. So that's why I think these are such valuable skills to cultivate and build up. And of course, if you don't want to create content, you could get really good at running ads, or you could you know find some other strategies that are available, or leverage Amazon and the traffic that they have. Those are the steps, guys. Those are the steps that I would take. I'm just going to think if I missed anything here to share with you guys. Um, you know, obviously, as you go through the journey as well, you know, you have a plan, right? But business plans change. So as you're going through the plan and executing, you're seeing and paying attention what's working, what's not working. If I notice, for example, hey, this is really taken off. This this run right here could lead to a million bucks. I might put more attention to that and maybe skip some of the other things because that's really what my my winner is. That's really the greatest opportunity in my business. Or maybe there's one product that I'm promoting that's really crushing it. So hey, I should put more emphasis and focus on that. So sometimes people, they follow a plan, but they don't look at what they're doing and what's yielding the best results, and they can overcomplicate things. And I think I would try to simplify things as I go, because there are gonna be some things that I'll, I'll learn, even with content. Hey, you know what, this content's not resonating. I gotta pivot and give more content based on what the analytics are showing me. There's always this element of optimizing and, 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 take, and identifying the opportunities in your business and exploiting that and really running with that as much as you can. I think that's gonna be the easiest path to a million bucks. And so as I take all this action over years, I'm gonna find what's working, scale that, blow that up, and uh, that's, you know, there's probably gonna be out of everything I do here, one thing, one or two things that will lead to 80% of, of that goal of making a million bucks. And the other things will be great income and complement everything else, but uh, there'll probably be one or two things that will blow up the most. No different than a YouTube channel. I've got over a thousand videos, over 60 something million views, but really there's only maybe a hundred videos, maybe 50 videos that uh, you know have hundreds of thousands of views or millions of views that have really built my channel more. And then the other 900 videos or 950 videos uh, or great videos and got you know good amount of views and whatnot, but not nearly as much as uh, you know the top 50 ones. So that's typically how it is as you start to pay attention to that and and, and adjust your focus and pivot for that. Whew, that's a lot, guys. That's a lot. Hopefully, I didn't overwhelm you guys too much, but I just wanted to share, be transparent. That's what I would do. Uh, this would allow me to make make a million bucks, no doubt about it. But also love what I'm doing and make an impact and contribution, be fulfilled at it which is the ultimate reward, and that's really what I wanna share. That's really the key message, guys. Once you make a certain amount of money, honestly, more money than that's not gonna change your life that much. You know, Once you have a million bucks or a couple million bucks, anything more than that is just gonna sit in your bank account or sit in stocks or real estate and be these investments that you'll probably never touch and will continue to grow and compound and maybe you'll enjoy it when you're older or maybe you'll give it away. But really, what I look at is if you can make money and even if it's less money than millions of dollars, but you're making money doing what you love and making an impact, I'd much rather choose that because honestly, there's actually other things that I could do to make a million dollars a lot probably easier and faster, but it wouldn't be as fulfilling for me. And that's why I've always come back to this because there are parts of this that aren't passive for me. You know, Creating YouTube videos is not passive. Certain things I do, I'm not, but I, I can make way more money, honestly, because I get a lot of opportunities thrown my way, but I'm just not excited for it because I'm like, yeah, I can make more money doing that, but I'd much rather just do what I love and what I'm good at and what you know lights me up the most, and that's why I do what I do here at Project Life Mastery. So um, sometimes it's actually a trade-off because um, yeah, there's there's certain opportunities that I get that I'm like, man, that's that's a good opportunity, but um, I have to say no to it because it would take away from my passion. So. Whew, that's where I'm at. Okay, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Always appreciate the comments and the support you guys give. If you wanna learn how to do some of this stuff, I do have videos and trainings and resources and all that sort of stuff to support you guys. I'll link it in the description. But probably the simplest one that I could direct you to would be an online quiz that I have. I call it the Freedom Quiz because it just has a few questions for you to determine which business model is best for you one of the best places for you to start and to learn this stuff. And uh, that is, uh, will take into account based on your answers, how much money you have and time and you know, what your passion, you know, or what's important to you in a business to help you decide which path to take, which again, could be very different than what I 
uh, I've shared here. So if you want to take that quiz, go to www.projectlifemastery.com slash quiz. I'll link that below. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. Have an amazing rest of your day and we'll see you again soon. Bye.